Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Whiskey Web and Whatnot. I'm your host, Charles William Carpenter the Third, and joining me is my special guest host, Adam Guy. Yargyle. <laughs> Yargyle. There you go. Um, so, and today, our guest is Natalia Vendito. For those who don't know who you are, tell us who you are and what you do. Okay, I'm Natalia, and I like to introduce myself as a JavaScript nerd developer. Nope. Yeah. Person who does yes. JavaScript. Um, I also work for Microsoft right now. I work in end-to-end -end developer experiences and developer tools. And that's what I do. That's what we do. Brad. Well, that sounds fun. Awesome. Uh, okay, well, we'll just dive into a little whiskey. Why not, right? Okay. Today we're having Smooth Ambler's Contradiction Bourbon. It is 92%, sorry, that'd be serious, 92 proof. Math is hard. Yeah. Anyway, so it is a blend of two different whiskeys. I guess that's the contradiction there. One of them is their in-house distilled. It's a two-year. The other is a sourced nine-year bourbon. So I, I guess it's technically a two-year. They'll say like when it's a blend... The age is the lowest one. So, yeah. Fun facts there. Mash bill. So the, okay, two different mash bills here. So the two-year is 60% corn, 20% wheat, and 20% malted barley. The sourced nine-year is 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. As if, you know, that means anything or makes any sense to some people. Who knows? Ooh, nice. Yeah. i got to get a little bit of the sound effect, so I put it close to the microphone. Some people think this is made up. Start there. It's true. Yeah. It's real. It's real. I can't afford real sound effects, so I have to actually do it. All righty. So we'll start with a little bit of mm -hmm. smell, mm -hmm. see what kind of comes up for you. Do you like whiskey? I do. Okay, excellent. I, I don't drink often, but yeah. I like it. Well, that's going to change. We'll see if we can finish this bottle. All right. Mm, citrusy orange notes for me. Yeah, yeah. Um. Mm. Okay, I want to say a little bit of like orange chocolate though. Yeah, Ooh, one of those. Nice. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Makes me want to hit one of those. Yeah, yeah. At Christmas time, you take the orange, you split it up, yeah, into you pieces. smash it down, yeah. and get a little so aggressive. Satisfying. And yeah, it is. It is actually very satisfying. Those things are delicious too. They really are. Definitely citrus. Right. Yeah, a lot of that forward. So I'm gonna do the whole chew your whiskey to open your salivatory glands. So you put a little bit in and you swish it around first. Okay. And that gets the salivatory glands going and then takes off your next sip, then won't be so burny and harsh. Oh, well, I got a little candy cane as it went mm. down the back. Mm. Mm. I'm yeah, just as it Christmas hangs out, mood, I guess. Oh my gosh. You're, you're getting good at this. Mm -hmm. uh, you're hired. Inception. I'm just inception. Yeah, there was a bunch there because it, and then it finishes with some bitter and it's, it's, um, it's actually a little smoother than I expected at it 92. Is. I agree. Okay. Vanilla, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, it's like a vanilla extract almost, like light vanilla flavor, some bitterness from that. Something else in the beginning that I'm not catching. Though. Man, there's something lingering on the front of my tongue that I'm trying to mm -hmm. put a thumb on also. Butter. Yeah. Nice. Mmm, smooth like Ooh. butter. I don't mean that as the BTS song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my son went through a year because of his teacher where he was obsessed with BTS. And oh, so it was like playing the music a bunch, getting like stickers and all this stuff. It was like a whole watching videos on YouTube. Anyway. We got Jojo Siwa is in our house. Okay. Yeah. I don't know who that is. It's like a 15, I'm sure she's older than that, but um, it's like she's in you a hope. mall. She's constantly in a mall with a jean jacket on. It's got studs on it and gems. Oh, okay. And her songs are just really poppy, happy. You know, kind of, kind of kid songs, teen, teen Sounds songs. Sounds rad. Yeah. Happy's good. Yeah, yeah. Butter. I, I would say like a like almost a buttery coating in the beginning, but yeah. I don't know. Uh, definitely nailed with like that whole for just a second in the middle. It kind of gets that peppermint stick or whatever. yeah. yeah. Uh, is, is Werther's the candy that's? Well, those are the caramel things. It's kind of okay. Yeah. So maybe it's maybe. Oh, see, we're really people are going to be very confused. Which one is it? <laughs> Hmm. So what happens next Maybe. is we rate it. He's got a scale. The yeah. logo for the show is okay. an octopus, and so they measure from zero to eight tentacles. And I like. Ooh, nice. Be high on the 
Okay, this is good then. Yeah, so zero is terrible, throw this out. That doesn't apply for you. Four is like not bad, not my first choice, just kind of okay. Eight is amazing. This is what I'm going to buy from here on out. Uh, yeah, and anything in between. Okay. What's yours? What's you want it? me to go first? Yeah. Okay. It is very different and interesting for me. Um, I also take a account price and things like that, like how accessible it is. Like if I paid 100 or more for something, I, I expect it to be pretty damn good. This one is around 50 bucks. I think it was like $45, $50, so very approachable in that sense. Interesting blend. Um, I don't know. As it lingers, like that bitter tends to hang out. So for now, I feel like it's more of like a six for me. Like it's good. I love the price point. is very approachable, so you can get that more often if you want. Um, but it is a bourbon, and it has a weird like – there's no wrong answer, of course. Especially if I'm giving the wrong one. But yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to go 5.5. Yeah, I'm kind of glad you dropped it. I'm thinking the same thing. Um, there's a, a wine term that I learned that it's probably the only wine term I know, and it's called unctuous, and it's the oiliness of the wine and and the sort of coating it might leave. And I'm feeling an unctuous amount of coating on my tongue, though I will say there's two things going for this I really like. Oh, yeah, look at it on yeah. the some legs. Cup. Yeah, it's got some legs. That's what it says. Um, I like the label where we have an elephant standing on the barrel. Yes. And it's called Contradiction. That's cute. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking of 5.5 as well. It's it's nice. I'm also getting a good hug in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you as well. Okay, yeah. good. Um, and it's nice. It's like I didn't know I was getting chilly, but this is warming me up. Um, yeah, yeah, stifle. it's warming me up as yeah. well. But I, I feel um, a taste of chocolate also that I kind of like. Mm. And so I'll give it a six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the oil, how did you call Legs? Well, he said legs. That's what I said, because yeah. that's what I've heard. They'll say it has legs. We call them um, tears, actually. And oh, cute. It's like tearing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And... No, it's okay. Nice. Was yeah. I speaking to... No, no. I heard you should be he's, louder. He's able to see your levels, and he's going to make sure we're picking you up better. Yeah. It's kind of a good for you to come in, actually, because we're about to transition, so. Yeah, it's totally fine. Yeah. We can. This is just for our for our one listener. Just, you know, re real-time audio adjustment. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're lucky enough okay. to have a trained professional with Boosty. us here yeah. at Microsoft Thank Build. You. We're lucky to have a trained professional, and you're not dealing with just me. I don't know anything about anything. Or Riverside. That who knows who the professional is there? Some oh, yeah. algorithm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like algorithms. Isn't that like mostly a made up word anyway? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Mean. Someone the other day was saying here at Build that AI is a term that um, you use when you don't know exactly what it does. And it's been around since like the 70s. And so as oh, yeah. soon as it became something that you could use, it would get a, a real name. Yeah. And here we are using it. Just everywhere right now. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like blockchain. I mean, that uh, I think that's a lot of people have said that is like you're just applying this generic term to a whole bunch of different problems. And it was blockchain for a while because that will fix all these different things. And uh, the ledger. now it must feels have a like, ledger. yeah, it must have a ledger. And uh, obviously there's viable technology behind that, but it was like a very blanket everything. Yeah. Everything gets a blockchain and that will make it cool and better and secure. We see how that has gone at this point. And AI feels very much the same way. It's sort of like, I don't know, I need to innovate in my business. Well, let's get AI involved. Like, I don't know how many chatbots you it's need. very high beating. But yeah. The train is, is, is going. Again, viable technology. Think very interesting really, stuff. Really but. good applications yeah. to AI. We, we've we seen some yesterday that I didn't even, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I wasn't like, even like thinking. Yeah, let, like what? Yeah. Like cars driving, aiding um, people with difficulties to to see around them yeah well that was the winner of the competition yeah that right? was the winner was of the cool. competition yeah. and i thought that was very cool yeah the um other project for people that have uh problems concentrating and yeah some 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 cool applications i think in the in the realm of health and healthcare um it's going to be big and it's going to help many people and that's what I'm expecting, at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there was something in one of the demos where they were talking about the utilize AI to kind of parse health history and give a really nice, like, synopsis for 
the you know the the doctor who's coming to see this patient and maybe doesn't know about their history and so it can like sh- quickly surface all of that and here are key points like that's it is really good nice. at summarizing so i yeah, suppose it yeah. can summarize as long as it doesn't hallucinate while it summarizes me to the doctor and the doctor's yeah, exactly. like i see you have this <laughs> looks like you have cancer and a third leg no cool so as a fellow javascript nerd then i think we should do a little we'll start with some hot takes we'll go down this um do you use inferred types or explicit types um and- well it depends on what i'm writing right yeah. it, there is not an answer for that uh if i am if i am using typescript and i am inferring types i am and if not i am not nice you are clearly a senior engineer you might be even distinguished mm, no not yet no. that's a long way to go to that <laughs> no but that's that's the same answer you're going to get for any particular i don't know mechanism of yeah. any language Depends on what you're doing, right? There is no right or wrong. Yeah. I'm not context is everything. Context is everything. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wing one. You do it. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, it's... IDE or text editor. Oh, that's so Eclipse or VS Code. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Or, or yeah, TextMate or Sublime versus VS Code and um, Eclipse. Um. So I like to have a runtime where I can, you know, debug, um, like I I like to do, like very in depth. Uh, so I would say ID in most cases. Um, but if I have to to write code in an editor and I don't have all the, you know, fancy stuff, I didn't have that when yeah. I started. Right. So yeah, I can same. do it. Yeah. I, but it takes more time. Of course, it's less productive. Yeah. And probably find yourself opening three or four other apps to probably, sort of fill in those gaps too. Probably that's write a lot of bugs. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so. I skip tests. Like, yeah. But, but um, yeah. I think, again, we shouldn't like let the tools define our ability or capacity to do something. Yeah. There you go. High five. Tools are to help us get to do things faster and better but there they shouldn't be the thing that may um allows us to do yeah like thanks you yeah you can pick up a different computer and get your job done you yeah. can have a different setup you have preferences but it doesn't it doesn't mean you can't work without i am in fact usually switching platforms yeah from mac to windows and and so on oh well then there we go mac or windows mac Nice. That's because I've Spicy. been working all my life with Mac, and so I'm faster and I'm better, and I'm you know I feel more productive. Yeah. I feel I get to whatever I want to get in an easier way. But if I was working with a Windows machine, probably for the last twenty years, that would be my choice. Mm-hmm. I was all Windows for so long, um, and then I learned that Mac can emulate Windows, and Windows cannot emulate Mac. And I was like, well, there's the kicker right there. If I yeah. can have both on one machine, but the other one machine can't have both, then I'm like, well, then I'll pick the one that's more versatile. Is that the, you mean like the boot camp thing, where it was boot like camp Google Parallels boot? or but, whatever it was you were doing? Oh, well, yeah. Parallels, yeah, as a VM or whatever, and then boot camp was like you could boot into it until yeah, and, they switched to Apple Silicon, so until I don't then, even know what yeah, yeah, where are we, we at can now? do now. It's yeah. probably Parallels only, I guess. I would guess, something yeah. like that. However, I... And, you can remove this later. <laughs> but this new ARM uh, machine that is was just announced. Yeah, I am really looking forward to work with that. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm yeah. even curious, and I I only have Windows for a gaming machine, you know, a test yeah. machine or whatever. And uh, but yeah, seeing the Snapdragon stuff does look very interesting, very cool. Yeah, and the benchmarks sound very interesting, and the price point is nice too. Like, yeah, yeah, I am getting tired of like multi-thousand dollar MacBook Pros, you know? That's know. that's also the case. I have a personal computer that is like, uh, a personal Mac, actually, that it's from 2015 or 14. It was on Mac OS 11. Yeah. And like, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, got an automatic update uh. and I couldn't use Docker anymore. Oh, oh no. no. And no, I couldn't use Node anymore. Wow, jeez. And it's an expensive machine. It's a MacBook 
MacBook Pro, 16 gigabytes, it's like something that could potentially should run that yeah. hardware wise. It should run. So longer. what's going on? Yeah. 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 That's the thing is they keep trying to get us to like buy new stuff every like three, two to three years. Like I've not, I've been in that mode where I'm like, I am not upgrading my phone anymore for a while. Like I just, I don't need the next one. Okay. You can introduce a new version as often as you want, but like I'm getting tired of it. It's almost like iPhones and next JS versions come out like twice a year. It's a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> They release like Node, then every six months, new phones. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I can't do I that. I just one. updated my 20. I had a 2011 MacBook Air, the 11 inch one. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was and a great one because it was like it. The, it was the envelope one or whatever. Yeah. Real thin. I could take it. It was literally a laptop where everything else I've ever gotten from work, they're like, here's your laptop. I'm like, that thing doesn't go on a lap. No. Right. That thing gets on a. It's a gaming yeah, machine. Yeah, it goes on a stand or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but last year, I did so much work with CSS Color. And I didn't have any screen in my house except the one in my pocket that could show all these new colors. And I was like, all right, I'll go get the new, you know, 2000 nit MacBook Pro or whatever so that I can test all these hyper rad colors. And, yeah. Yeah. And you've I'm been not, happy with that. I have been happy. It's a, It's been a really solid box. Yeah. But. I drag around a, a 16 inch and I'm sometimes I'm like the new MacBook Airs. They're not like that thin, but they are pretty small and mm. the M chips are pretty impressive. And yeah. turns out I just change text files so like how much unless you're running docker or something like you said in general it's like why do i keep buying like a film editing machine for changing text files it's right. yeah i gotta i question like i don't know maybe i'm in a midlife crisis but it's like i'm questioning all my choices about like new shiny everything anymore and the impact on the earth yeah right? that too on the planet right yeah, which all this ai stuff is not helping um Totally consuming oh, energy yeah. and water. While there's places that are in droughts, we are just abusing. Make me another zebra, you know, smoking a cigarette in the forest. And then, and meanwhile, people can't get a glass of water. That's very true. Yeah. Didn't mean to be a bummer there. I was going to say, you're going down a path. I just watched last week tonight recently, and they were talking about corn and subsidized farming and all of that and, like, how terrible that is because most of the corn they make isn't even edible. It's actually utilized to go into plastics and oh, ethanol. And like, yeah, they try it and they're like, this is disgusting. It tastes like chalk. It's not even, you couldn't, can't use it for food and, uh, and requires a certain kind of fertilizer, high nitrate fertilizer mm -hmm. too, which destroys a bunch of things. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'll try not to be a total bummer there, but yeah. Like, Chicken and in the corn and the corn can't grow. <laughs> uh-huh. No. All right. No. Uh, be okay. One listener let's go. Let's like, do. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do another hot take. Uh, get rebase or get merge. Ah, uh, again, it depends. It depends. I now you're be, wrong. Finally. I used to be on the. I used to be very, very um, strict. Yeah. Let's use the word strict sure. about this. A few years ago, I was team merge, no fast forward. Like I wanted to Ooh. have every piece of details. Yeah. And right now I'm like I'm a bit more chill about it. And I think there are times when a rebase is completely fine and acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> in in the context of the flow you use, the strategy you use. Because back in the day I was in, okay, we're going to cut a release. We're going to, you know, every two weeks or so, oh, right. there was a kind of different context and why we needed a different kind of history yeah. of what we were doing. And right now when you are on continuous integration and delivery is like, yeah. That's I'm, true. I may not want to go in that direction and just, just go the rebase route. Nice. Yeah, it's a good reason. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. What about uh, let or const? Uh, well, it depends. If I'm going uh. to reassign the value <laughs> or not. Yeah, so in its literal intention, you were like, yeah, yeah that's, that's kind of where I'm at, too. But it's like a people... signal you send to other people. Oh, it, you, can you still signals. Well, I mean, we can go to signals, too. Yeah, signals are observables. Signals. Nice. Yeah, nice. That is. Um, let's see here. Was GraphQL a mistake? Yes. Oh, very strong. Hot. Yeah, there we go. That was, that was Struck a, a chord. All right. What's up? Why? Why? You were so swift on that. Uh, performance, mostly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why not using caching mechanisms that we have there forever? Yeah. Um, 
I think it helped a few problems uh, or solve a few problems. And I like that you can choose what you return. That part is really cool. Yeah. But I think you can do that also if you have a good design for your API today. Yeah. You don't need to return an object that is super nested and have to clean it and particularly never clean it in the front. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you can have a good API design and then you don't need to return also things that you don't need. So That's yeah. true. Yeah. You may need to maintain more endpoints. Uh, but if you have a good OWASP or um, OpenAI specification or yeah. whatever um, contract, then you're good. Yeah, contract contract testing. I'm a big advocate for that, even though it doesn't happen in most so many instances. I was like, when it did and has happened in my experience, it's like this gets ahead of so many problems. If you would just work together in this way, I am the consumer of your API. You're the publisher, so API here's our contract, and we're going to test that yeah. every time on both sides that there are changes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Super cool. And, yeah, I, I don't really want to, like, I, I really appreciate the work of everyone, like, creating new technology. Um, but I personally have had many problems with Apollo client resolution on yeah. many projects, and particularly if you're working in a mono repo and you have different versions of Apollo in different projects. Yeah. Mm-hmm it may break everything and it may be very difficult to solve. Well, that that's a very good point because I think part of the problem and part of the like crap that GraphQL gets is rooted in Apollo in a way, you know? Uh, because maybe, you know, possibly if you go another direction, there's Urkel and there's, what's the, re- or the, the meta one too? Relay. Relay mm. is another yeah. one. Yeah. Like there's a few other client side libraries that are actually not bad they're pretty nice and they have some opinions on different patterns there that make a few of those things better but the complexity around like schema management across services and things like that i don't know yeah i think it's most i think it's a mistake for most people to choose it first for right. sure absolutely yeah maybe it does work for you in certain circumstances with disparate services microservices architecture kind of stuff mm-hmm. but like you know that's a very nuanced and specific use case and you probably don't i don't need it for my app with no users so you know if you're doing serverless and you are running a serverless function you just want to return whatever um yeah yeah Yeah. rest endpoint and not have another import right first of all another dependency to maintain and yeah that's true especially in serverless that's a really good a good point there um do you have any more hot takes? You want to take another? Yeah. Um, macro front ends or micro front ends? Oh. I am not a big promoter of micro front ends. And that's that's going to come as a surprise because I maintain a site about micro front ends. But yes. that's because I had to work with micro front ends for a, um, a while in an enterprise context. And I did a lot of research and I did a lot of exper- experimentation. And then I was coming across similar questions from people and I wanted to document it so I could link people back to whatever my opinion on the subject was because I I am not implying that everything I say there is perhaps true to everyone but that's my um that's how I experienced it yeah now that's a really good point because I think that's definitely focus of what you know what our research into you and your history and stuff. You're you're obviously very connected back to that that site. Which do you want to say the URL for people? It's a microfrontend.dev. Yep. Yeah. 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 So you say it depends also for macro versus micro. Um. Definitely, architecture always depends. Always has trade offs. Yeah. And. I, you need to start by your use case. Like some people just start coding or to start building something without yeah. thinking about, okay, where am I going with this? I think it should be um, it should be defining a problem, a- explaining how you're going to solve it, then try it. And if it doesn't work, this is why we have all these new patterns of yeah. continuous integration and deployment and, and trying and, and figuring out if we are wrong then we can take things back, roll them back, start again, 
or redefine, but we need to have some certain definition before we start working. Yeah. And that's that's going to tell us um, a lot of what the solution should be. Yeah, I think that's a really good point of like, instead of hearing about the shiny new thing and the React e ecosphere in particular suffers from this because there's, you know, 50 new frameworks and patterns and opinions and whatever else, uh, you know, every other month. And code transformers and this and that. Oh my and gosh, just, yeah. It stacks up so fast. Transforms, compile, like, yeah, do all these things. And um, in order to make it more like, you know, backend code, which has to be compiled for the most part. Um, yeah. And so people want to learn about something that they heard about or read about and they think is interesting. And they just come in jamming that solution without really understanding the problem, Absolutely. which has its own cascading effects. Yeah, I like I describing think. it like it's like a, a chef. You have two different kinds of chefs. One will show up and he asks, what am I cooking? And then he'll go find the necessary things or if she or they'll, they'll go find the things that they need to execute that dish in their style. The other kind of chef is pretty much what a lot of folks do in the node world is they'll go and create the super kitchen. Right. Right. And I and I call it like a like a dump truck just shows up. Like NPM installs like beep, beep, beep. Oh my gosh. And it just dumps tools down. And then they spend the whole day setting up the kitchen. They're like, Yeah, I've got the best oven. I've got the best super dicer. And I'm like, you could have used a knife. You know, like but it's just yeah, so you addicting even started to kind of do that. Yeah, you, you haven't have even cooked things. Seriously. And so then they get in there and then they don't even know where tools are because the kitchen is so big, things get it's just it's just funny. And so I think it takes time, it takes knowing your trade-offs to find right. out later that what you really should have done is built up slowly instead of tried to work in a reductive fashion. It's just too hard to work backwards. I like your analogy, but I would add another type of chat. Okay. That's, that's nice. the one I, I would like to be, I intend to be. It's the one that, first of all, talks to the one that's going gonna eat, right? What do you like eating? Mm. What are you in the mood for? And what are your dietary restrictions? And then looks at their kitchen and evaluate the limitations of, you know, delivering that food. And then if they need something else, like they, that is not in the kitchen, they get it. You're right. I love this. And then they cook. It's like the progressive meal. enhancement. It's like you have a user. Every user visits with different preferences. I want exactly. a light. I want a light website. Uh, I'm on mobile. Here's my constraints. And so they bring so much. To it. So, yeah, the best chef is the one that's looking at all of these individual moments and serving something up just right for them. Yeah. Very nice. And it may be counterintuitive because I um, um, I work in developer tools uh, and developer experience, but I think that our industry the ja and the JavaScript and front-end development industry suffers from, I don't know if that's a syndrome, but we never think about the end user more than we think about the developer experience. That's true. There's, we there's are been a currently massive, in a bad cycle, yeah. Yeah, we've we've been, had this massive shift because it definitely used to be the other way. We cared so much about the user experience and making sure, and especially during the browser wars, you know, there's 50 different possibilities this could render, and we want to make sure that's consistent across the board. We thought a little more about accessibility. We thought a little more about, like, um, uh, uh, metadata a little bit, you know, like meta tags and yeah. micro format stuff. Yeah. I don't know if you remember any of that mm -hmm, stuff. Of course. Yeah, performance. We cared a lot more about performance. And now we're like, performance is your problem. You all have MacBooks and, a, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to dump this onto you and you'll get there. And here we are in single page apps and uh, all this JavaScript. And yeah, I think that sometimes we don't think about the fact that um, not everyone is on the same speed and yeah. closer to the same and um i don't know point of presence or whatever is delivering the, the code um to a machine and the, not everybody has obviously a high-end mac or exactly. arm machine yeah um, and most people don't need that you know and i think we kind of forget ourselves in that way it's like you know people are on an ipad or a chrome uh, what is it? it's a the chromebooks that are running I don't know. I forget a little bit. But, you know, you have, like, these ba basic OSs, and most things are in the cloud, and, you know, the, so they don't have a ton of processing power, and yeah, they don't have the same experience. I mean, I can remember, like, 10 years or so ago, we would have, like, device labs. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Where'd, where'd they all right. go? Yeah. yeah. Where'd they all go? Mm-hmm. All the yeah. like billion different phones and laptops and all these things to try and like get it across, like working well across all of yeah, those. Yeah, I remember at the company I was working for, like we had like a closet and then we opened and we had all yeah. the phones and all the laptops and yeah, yeah that was super we cool. We loved showing clients that. We'd be like, look at our rad wall full of all these phones. Some yeah. of them, you know, ancient and some of them new and it's just fun. It was yeah. like you're yeah. in a museum, but it's also a functional space to make sure things work right. Yeah. I have a hot take to ask you. This is a, uh, does good DX lead to good UX? Not necessarily. Yeah, I think no, often no. not. I would say probably more often not. That's not the common belief, as far as I know. That's I, what that's what led so much to this DX effort. You you had Alex Russell who was challenging this, but a lot of other people didn't challenge it. They were like, "Look, if I'm faster, better, stronger at my day job, I have more time to deliver accessibility." And no. you were like, "But you, but you didn't though. You just." Yeah. I don't know. You spent more time adding another thing into your kitchen. Well, that's just what it was. Exactly. Like DX has gotten better and better and better. And there's a lot of focus there. There's tons of tools and tooling and software and all this fun stuff. Like we're very much catered to. But conversely, I don't think that's that has translated at all to our users getting any more benefits or the companies getting more benefits per se. I think server side rendering and all those meta frameworks that are um using this this rendering strategy yeah kind of connected to the x for some reason right but i don't really see the correlation because you can actually you don't necessarily need to have a good dx while building with one of those frameworks yeah <laughs> so yeah it may be good for performance that's that's it depends on how you then Rehydrate. Yeah. And so, um, but not to the X, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The only one that, uh, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier, which does kind of tie into micro f- uh, formats, which is like Astro to me feels like one of those frameworks that does a lot of things really good. Mm-hmm. Um, does kind of make performance good just as an artifact of saying HTML is a first class citizen. So, like, that's kind of our first step of like delivery and obviously yeah. you can do all kinds of crazy things with it including use it as a micro front end kind of tie together because you can have you know a spelt app and a react yeah. app and you can kind of tie those together and it's just like route based but um that's really the only one because i i really liked next for a while because when i would work in react it was like the wild wild west of 50 different things mm-hmm. to take a library to a framework so i can actually have apps but then, like, and then next was like, here are the rules. And I like rules around these things. It's like, follow these conventions and this is the outcome. It's like, that makes sense. Great. Now I can just, and that I think turns into good things for the user. But when it starts getting wild, like next is just kind of keeps making me go back and read their documentation again, even though, oh, you know, I've spent the last three years writing next app. So I should be good and know how to do this. But now I have to keep relearning how to do it hell with it i'm done with this right. so i don't know where i was going with that but i think like those frameworks anyone that like just says follow the the happy path and your users will benefit i think those are ones where you get dx and ux potentially yeah i really like astro actually micro front end that dev is written in astro Ooh, there you go. Um, it would be nice that makes sense yeah um I like island architecture. I like the concept and the um, implementation. I think, like you said, it's not necessarily true that any framework with a good DX will be performant or the other way around. Yeah. So We can definitely find ways to screw things up. So. Yeah. This yeah. has been very tech heavy. Should we get into the whatnot a little bit? Although I have a, like a small joke, it's killing me. I gotta, I gotta share it. Get, let me let, let it out. I don't want you to hurt no. anymore. <laughs> okay, imagine, or maybe I'll just do this. Maybe I'll just be this character. I want to be the Dev Zoolander, and so when someone's like, "You have to hydrate the component," and then I'll pour water on my computer, you know, I'm just like, there's got to be someone out there that's like taking all this stuff. Like you got, hey, use Grunt. No, no, gulp it. You know, oh just gosh. somebody taking it all like way too literally. 
You can do a video series on That's this. That's kind of yeah. Think. You have an opportunity yeah. to so we can TikTok. create those memes. TikTok. I don't go. I refuse. I'm not TikTok. I'm not TikToking either. I'm not but on TikTok. Yeah, yeah that's funny. But we're all like, put it there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it would be fun to do little shorts where I'm like Dev Zoolander and it's just a moron. You know. Yeah. yeah. There's a market for that, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Give React. It a shot. Yeah. Exactly. React, React was a mistake. I heard you say this earlier. I don't know. Did I? No. You were just <laughs> reading my shirt. shirt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was just reading your shirt. Yeah, it's not yes. your fault. Nobody's going to get upset with you. I would say more like JSX was a mistake. Mm. It's possible because I can recall. It's I mean, just JavaScript. Yeah, it's just JavaScript. Mm. Yeah, and maybe that's kind of, I don't know. So a good part of my career early on was all about creating these separation of concerns so we fought and fought and fought to get these web standards, yes, separation same. of concerns. We're from the same things. times, yeah, I think. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I also listen, live in Barcelona. Yeah, uh, by that time. Oh, yeah. did, you, did you bite your tongue? No, no. that's way. That's the way the um, I'm Castilians. I know, I'm yeah, trolling. I'm trolling, yeah. 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 I don't know. And I was just giving you information. Uh, anyway, I, yeah, so we fought so long to do a separation yeah. of concerns. And then they're like, no, just here's your JavaScript file, and yeah, let's throw our pseudo HTML in there. And I was like, this stuff is so ugly, like bullshit. But yeah. it irked me to see the CSS yeah. in the same file as the. Even with yeah. Astro today, I don't do that. No. Oh, the single single file components are like I don't want to mix it up. Yeah, yeah. I don't love that either. Um, but then I use Tailwind all the time, and so then it's just like strings. And Who did care. it first? Was it Polymer? Who did the the single file component first? Who, I remember Polymer having something like that. Vue had something like that. Uh, did Angular didn't? Yeah, I think it was it was Vue. Was it Vue? Yeah, yeah. that okay. makes more sense. I think it was Vue because Polymer mm -hmm. was trying to follow the path of web components. Yeah, and web components are almost more like separation. what Next did for React. Polymer was trying yeah. to do that for w, yeah, web right. Components. Yeah, Wasms. They're out there, but I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah, JSX is. It's not the best. I liked handlebars. Handlebars was nice. Yes. I liked Jade. But yeah. I'm also the weirdo that I'm like, white space limited. I'm cool with that. And everyone's like, oh, how yeah. could you? Well, I'm like, dude, curly brackets and semicolons are for the machines, man. That's just noise in my editor. I never yeah. used Jade. But I really liked handlebars. Yeah. Yeah. Handlebars was nice What's because easy? it was like, yeah, it, it was nice. It gave yeah. you some looping and some other stuff. EJS was it, the one I was like, ugh. Too many. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like percentage signs and weird shenanigans yeah, that's a little bit weird uh, i yeah. came from like doing jinja templates in python and so jinja there's jinja and ninja right there's both i think so i never oh, I just none jucks none jucks okay sorry oh. anyway same with with percentages is that i was working as a full stack java javascript developer with jsp like java server pages it's a lot of that J's. use a lot gosh percentages yeah and you're like um yeah. You, no. Again, for the machines. So, um, first off, I want to ask do you. I thought you liked the whiskey. Yeah, I do. But okay. maybe, yeah, maybe we, I, I want to keep my English at a certain level. Oh no, no, we can definitely let the wheels off here. You know, so you, we, you can chug that and see what happens. Anyway, we, uh, wheels up, wheels up. So, how is it living in Barcelona, as a secret Real Madrid fan, though? Oh, oh, spice. Now, the spice of the whiskey and the spice you, of the you, question have yes, united. Yes, and I've got a good follow up. I'm putting a pin in that one about spice, too. Um, I'm actually kind of confrontational sometimes. Nice. Yes. I like this. So, Passionate. That's the way we. Yeah. So I do not advertise it, but I don't hide it. Yeah. You wear like so, a, a shirt out or whatever, and that's not a big deal. I don't, I don't own a jersey. No. But no, no. Interesting. But. but yeah, but um, if you did, you if they care. ask me, do you go to the I don't know to see the game today? Um, no, I'm not interested because no. I don't follow. Unless it's like, the Classico. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That. That'd be a good one. What made you a Madrid fan? Mm, my father was one. Okay, oh, and that's sweet. Pretty strong. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know if there was a particular player that you drew you there or anything else. Yeah, I don't think so. I think back in the day in the eighties, they they had a pretty strong. Yeah. team and he followed he was a very big soccer fan and yeah. i have always uh, been very close to him yeah and yeah that's why that's very cool yeah 
I was going to say, based on your spicy comment, I wanted to say, why isn't there any spice in any Barcelona food? Or like Span traditional Spanish food? And that's, that's an interesting question. We in uh, South America, in the south of South America, Argentina and Uruguay, we also don't tend to eat very spicy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the influence of Spain, probably, and the Italian cuisine is also not very hot, unless you have pepperoni in your pizza. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they have the crushed red pepper they'll put on there, at least around Napoli or whatever, you yeah, get more of that. Yeah, there are some peppers, like some older people love. Yeah. Um, yeah, but in general, our cuisine is not, not very spicy. Not very spicy, no. yeah. Mm -hmm. And remember, I was staying with some guys in Barcelona, and I... Okay, so two points here. The first was... We went to the grocery store, and I picked up some hot sauce to put on pizza, and they thought I was crazy. They were yeah. like, man, that's crazy. Too spicy. And I think it was just like Tabasco sauce. It wasn't anything like crazy oh, or yeah. special. But I did prefer that to the weird wet tuna that mm. they would put on. It's like on tuna that you don't really drain it. And they, that's always you always get a salad that has like that tuna yeah. there. Yeah. And then, yeah, you can get it on the pizza. Well, I don't know so why wait, you That's kind of anchovy-ish, I suppose. No, Do you no, like that? Tuna... Pizza is pretty common. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. weird shit. But I also think it's because in the Mediter Mediterranean kitchen, there is so much um, like good ingredients that are na natural and it's taste true. so good. And why would you want to ruin that? Ooh, I love taste? that. Yeah. Don't cover it up. Just, yeah. just have Enjoy it as it. it is. Yeah. Appreciate it for what it is. And yeah. it'll give you perspective for other things. Yeah. That's kind, of, kind of fair. I don't know. Why not all things? But yeah. I mean, in general, like, I enjoy the city. It's incredible architecture and, and art and just, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, felt, like, very natural in the middle of a city, too. It was, like, very cool. But some of the food things were, like, a little... I could eat a rabbit. I'm down with that. But, like, I don't want tuna on my pizza. You know, like, I don't know. That was kind of the breaking line. Yeah, tuna pie. I don't know if I'd like that either. But I might eat one piece just because. Just to try it. Just yeah. to say, I yeah, I tried tuna it. Pie. Tuna pie. Yeah, there is... There is um. Uh, uh, you should. Please. That's a meme. You should put that on Twitter. I love, I love tuna, tuna pie. pie. I love yeah. And let tuna people pie. infer whatever they want. Yeah, they they um people from Galicia from uh, the north. Yeah. They they have like this tuna pie that is amazing. Really? Is it savory or sweet? No, it's it's salty. Oh, yeah. it's tuna savory is, for sure. is okay. salty. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really nice. I don't know. I would try it again, but I'm I just. That whole wet tuna thing, all over things. It's like many other things. Great fresh seafood and all that fun stuff. I like how um, Catalan integrates some French too in it. Yeah. It's like some words are French and all of that. Yeah. So it was, a, it, it was a language they used to um, do commerce in between the countries that are in True. the Mediterranean. Yeah. And this is why they got all influenced by, um, yeah, that's like a merge of Many, many languages, Portuguese, Spanish, French, yeah. Italian. Portuguese is hard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so do you think you'll join the re the revolution? Which one? <laughs> I would. Yeah? <laughs> You're like, <laughs> I don't know, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, if they were to uh, break away from Spain and all of that. Oh, mm. you mean the Catalan yeah. revolution? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You just meant in general you would join a revolution? I, I would join a revolution. <laughs> um, That particular revolution, I don't know. I'm not... I don't know if I understand it very much. Yeah. I am not a very political person. Right. I mean, I have my political ideas and opinions, but maybe not. that's not um, a concern for me. Yeah, Specific. Right. And I understand the um, component of I was born in this land, I mm. wanted to be free from whatever, but that's not something I feel yeah. in me. Yeah. So... Yeah, that it's makes just, sense. It just happens. It was mostly a tongue-in-cheek yeah. question, anyway. But it is kind of an interesting thing because when you consider that, it's like I think it's a lot of hate bred from the time of Franco and yeah. you know um, having that closed country and like okay, you know, breaking away. That's why Barcelona hates Real Madrid because it's the royal team and it's the one that Franco liked the most. And yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah, it's rooted in things that I didn't leave. No. Right. And so I I don't have a strong opinion. You know what you did live through was the JavaScript framework wars. <laughs> right, yeah. We were talking yeah. about Green Street hooligans earlier, and y'all were talking about uh, jerseys. 
and I was like, count down until you can buy the jersey for the framework you like. And then I know, it almost count is. down until outside of a conference, people are bringing bricks and trying to bash heads over frameworks. You know, like, what yeah, framework do you use? You sort of lie. I think people are a little crazy and yeah. didactic about, like, their favorite tools to a degree. It's like That's supporting, I mean. like, yeah. a political party or a sports team or whatever else. I could see it like... escalating. It'd be, you know, humans are humans. We're chaotic buttholes, and yeah. so somebody's going to do it. So I worked with Angular for many, many years, and I had a preference I'm for so... it because I liked it. It yeah. worked for me. Yeah. Um, I see it going in a really good direction right Definitely now. Definitely now. So Let's... I I am I am really liking Angular. Yeah. They called a lot of things so early. They were early TypeScript. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. so many things that people chastised yeah. them for. And then here we are going, I guess they were and right. And once they got the CLI, which they had borrowed from yeah. Ember. Yeah, and migrations and all yeah. sorts of goodies. Yeah. All kind of, yeah, generators. Generators. Like generators are yeah. nice. Redwood has generators, yeah. and I like that part about it too. Yeah. So schematics, you mean? Basically, same thing. Yeah. yeah, schematics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, similar thing where it's like, make me a component, yeah. make me a you know a route or a controller and yeah. you know, all that. Yeah, I think it's a very very sophisticated tool. Yeah. It may have a steeper learning curve, sure, obviously. But I like the opinion. I in, do. I in, in when it comes to development, I think you need to have an opinion. Yeah. Because it's easier. Then you don't have to you know go browse and find and test and. You just go to the style guide and you get your answer, right? See, yeah. Um, so, so you like that same kind of like follow the happy path. We're yeah. telling you how to do all these things that you need. Yeah. Don't figure it out yourself. What's the point of reinventing all that? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I was never like hating on anyone. I think that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make anyone happy and it doesn't make you right. There's yeah. like, I heard this comedian one time. He's like, yeah, so my family will go to war against your family. And once you're dead, we'll be right. Yeah. And I'm like, no, well, but okay. You'll be the winners, I guess. You'll be alive. Yeah. Something happened, but I don't think it made you right. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't make you right. That That's that's true. And also I have used all of the frameworks. Yeah. Because, yes. the, because it was a requirement. Because it was a request from the customer. Because uh, so solid and no, 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 no. I mean or... the I mean the three oh, ma the, major the ones. three major ones. So like wait, you never price. used Ember? Remember it? Had I a... use Ember. I use always Backbone. remember Ember. Backbone. I used See, that's yeah, kind yeah. of why I accepted. with marionette. Yeah. With marionette. Yeah. Backbone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had come from a Backbone marionette project. Yeah, and at first React seemed god awful because of the JSX and syntax stuff, but it was it was the view layer. I could actually just create a nice isolated yeah. component. This was the best version of React was just the view layer. The I old React, the, the old class React, based the React. Seriously, yes. that, was the, that was the one where I was like, I do need an infinite list. Yeah. And this is the right library for that particular, and it then really people was. built a whole website out of something yeah. built for infinite lists. I know. And I was like, yeah. this is stupid, y'all. I is have like, to find a router, yo. I have to find <laughs> states, I have to, yeah, I have to find all these things and then and they're yeah. like, classes are dumb, but now they're in the spec. And no, it's like, yeah, exactly. Right, yeah, like, right. What, the, what so is your problem why? there? Just... And we have real private members in a class, and people don't use it. Oh, class, I know. Class I, that's bizarro. Is, yeah. Class is cool. Class is cool. I'm wrong. And class has class. It's just, uh, yeah. It's just an object. It's fancy. Yes. All right. I want to ask, if you weren't a developer, what would you do? What would your job be? What would you want to do? And it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be like a oh, I don't have this skill. You can do whatever. Pick whatever your interest okay. would be. So right now, I would be a film maker. Ooh, Ooh, lovely. I love that. I went to film school for a year, by the way. I went to art school, nice. actually. I taught so myself I. I went to, art to, school be, as well. yeah, to be a developer. I was a, I was a graphic designer. Same. Then I went to be a web developer, web, web designer. Then web developer, like I started with Action Script, Flash. Oh, so yes. good. Yeah. yeah. Action we Script have... two or three? Ah, uh, no, two. Two. So yeah. then when three came out, were you pissed or happy? I think I, this is when I made the transition to JavaScript, yeah. actually. So, because mm. I wanted, mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. building these Flash websites. Flashturbation. I was, I was, Never I heard. was actually, That's today I learned. I, w I wanted to make them full screen. And yeah, I realized, like, I started trying to figure out how I do that with the, with the um, scenario and all the things and the clip. And I figured out it's not possible and you have to code. And then I started learning how do I do this. And then I got to do that. But then I needed to send the form. Yes, like, you have to call out. Yeah. yeah. So how do I do that? And then I started 
researching and I find that you need PHP, maybe you need a server, you yeah. need yeah. Yeah. And this uh, is how I got deeper down the rabbit hole. That's awesome. I we, never got came back from. Yeah. I think we we have a very similar career path actually. Same thing, like yeah. going to school for architecture initially, getting into photography, I, learning Photoshop. I was, I was going to architecture. Hey, well, stop I, it. Y'all yeah. are too cute no. right now. You're too cute. Sir, yeah, yeah. 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 No, uh, seriously. When I was a child yeah. in Uruguay, that's all I ever wanted to do. I wanted to grow up to be an architect. I was going to ask you about your hey, tattoo. Uh, yeah, so I told you I'm very close to my father. Yeah. I, I, he, he passed away, but he was starting to be an architect. He had to drop out for reasons. So I went to university to learn to be an architect because I wanted to fulfill you know, his dream. Because I, I really liked it. Too. Yeah, I was good that. at drawing and technical oh, yes. stuff. And then I came across CAD, like, um, yeah. uh, you know, computer assisted design. And I was like, oh, computers yeah. are cool. They are cool. Drawing is cool, uh, but machines are real cool. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's. Well, that's awesome. That's and it all helped. ties back to like filmmaking. You yeah. were mini filmmaking and flash to a degree. Yeah, 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 exactly. But now movie clip that was that component was ahead of its time. Yeah, there is this movie I really like called um, Talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah, oh, and yeah. there is a remake now that is a series that yes. is m- closer to the book and it's oh. all in black and white. Yes, it's amazing. It's on. It's actually on this, and I just haven't gotten it. To it yet? Cool. I'll add it to my list. That sounds great. Yeah, it's an, it's on Netflix. It's really, you really You like good. it? Okay. The, every frame is a photography, like nice real that. cinematography. Yeah. Like, yeah, where it's art. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that. That's what I love about all old movies is they didn't they couldn't 70s, rely on actually. effects yeah. and all this stuff, and so it just it was really thoughtful. And the most fascinating of it is for the first three or four episodes, um, you don't have any music. It's just so focused on what you're seeing yeah that is pretty silent and that's an interesting way of capturing and engaging the viewer without needing to you know connect them to sounds yeah yeah it's really good that is cool wow, wow that's yeah, really like neat. That. it's almost like they're not cheating they're they're like well, our visuals are so good we're not going to subsidize yeah uh, yeah i love that okay if you do want to be respectful of your time and all of that stuff why i'm having fun well Fun is good. Yeah, that's definitely cool. Um, so inference or no? Yeah. Oh, nice. She's like about to bounce you a hollow. Yeah, long. exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, inferred or explicit types. Mm-hmm. It depends. Uh, I I trust a library that provides types, and so mm-hmm. I will infer on my dependencies, and then obviously explicit types and like functions and stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I want to like oh, my arguments need to be these things and I'm going to return this thing. That's kind of it for the most part. Like, I don't get too crazy otherwise. But if you ask me if I love JavaScript more than TypeScript or the other way around, yeah, JavaScript. Ooh, Always. high five That's again. true. I kind of yeah. do like the, you know, the training wheels off. I appreciate TypeScript when you are, maybe you're in cer- like circumstances where either you don't know who you're working with or you don't yeah. trust them. Then... I like more you know, more guardrails, but like if it was just me, yeah. Go, exactly. Go nuts I, with that. I wouldn't ship anything to production in JavaScript today because I'm so used to using Java TypeScript for yeah. that. But when I'm having fun You just want to yeah. express. Yeah, yeah. You want to sit down and get yeah. yeah. And then also like because that takes out a step, right? You don't have a compiler. Yeah. TSC goes away. You can write this file that your browser can read. That's really fun. I like yeah. the idea um more and more about like the way these things are supposed to work instead of our workarounds per se right. so dhh and i've mentioned him a couple of times these last couple of days but like it's just resonating with me in a lot of ways where he's like look at this no build application i'm shipping highly complex millions of users this is possible if you want that you know right and yeah. everybody buys in right so that's the whole thing is like it's the hive mind organizationally but if you're just building a thing, why not? There is one strong opinion I have. Okay. I'm going to figure out if I make you cut it or not. No CSS frameworks. I love it. <laughs> that's that's a, one of the questions a, on here. Is vanilla CSS or Tailwind? Oh, we didn't do that. No. One. Clearly okay. you have an answer. Yeah. Vanilla Tell CSS. me more. I'm here for this conversation. Okay. Absolutely unnecessary. But right now, today, why? I don't get it. Yeah, because CSS has gotten really good. I mean, it's a little, obviously. It's a little bitching. I'm, uh, yeah. For me, I'm lazy. 
there's a lot of like I'm lazy and I have to get things done and it's not just for me and does the laziness other... mean you like the copy paste ability of Tailwind? Some of that, yeah. Yeah. And also I can just it's one of its in, best features. Right there in context, kind of like type what I want it to do for a way. It's almost like natural language to a degree. It's sort of like, yeah, margin. So you four. went from separations of concerns. Now you're all the way back into I want this to do it in strings, the same though. And yeah, I used to true. do yeah. websites where you had, you know, the style attribute and you're putting your stuff right there. And it is still separation but then, of concerns. You know, too, you I, know, like, I definitely yeah. felt strong about taking that out of there and being able to, you know, manage it over here and make HTML be cleaner. I don't know. Yeah. What are, you, what are your favorite new CSS features that you're like, this is why I, I, I go vanilla. It's just too badass. What are the it's, things? It's not that new, but I remember having to use tables and stuff. And so grid layout grid and, and Flexbox for me were like, oh my God, this is so easy now. We used to have to ship with asterisks Float for different and, browsers. Yeah, yeah. 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 So much right? floating yeah, and ridiculousness. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so it's like yeah. table-like. You can imagine something in a table, but then it's semantic. Yeah. And so that's nice. Yeah. That's my problem with CSS frameworks. They're not semantic. Yeah, they're they, it's true. They're like you see this tiny tag with 25,000 lines of CSS classes. Yeah. And it, I don't know, maybe... You can abstract that to a degree. You can, like, work around it. But then that's the whole same thing is, like, what are the workarounds rather than how is this supposed to work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what what does MDN say you do with this? Great. Like, let's just follow the manual of the internet. So you're probably right. I, that's why I say I work in this way out of laziness because I'm focusing on some other things because I'm kind of a – all the code I write has to do with like the open source project and its application that I work on and not necessarily my, you know, day job kind of thing per se. Um, and so I think about it as like, I want to ship. And so this is just another like lazy lever and mm. I can think about other business logic. But this is an, this is an opinion I never say on tech Twitter because right. I, I've seen people get really um, vehement. So what? Isn't that and... fun? That's like a fake it, world. It it's like Second be, Life or something. It used to be fun. It got to a point when it was like, yeah, I want to be part of this. I'm telling you, like, Green I, Street Hooligans, I'm telling you. It's yeah. there on Twitter. I you want know, to have a conversation with people, and if they disagree the, with me, it's fine. That's okay, like, That's right? great. It's yeah, great. That, you're not that stupid and progress. wrong. You yeah. just have yeah. a yeah. different opinion, and we both can get there in a, in a different, you know, uh, we both can get the same outcome. Exactly. And we're just going to, like, follow a different opinion to get there. That's what I like about code is that it, you know, so many people think, like, this is the right way and you're dumb. And they're they're rude about yeah. it, you know, yeah. quite frankly. Absolutely. Um, and you're dumb if you don't think what I think. And it's like, well, well they're, they're always so surprised that anyone could ever have done anything since the fucking 50s or whatever. You know, like, oh, the code back then, there's no way they could have got, got anything done. There's no way. And you're like, yeah, dude, they yeah. did, though. And they built they amazing lot, shit. They sent shit to space. Like, you, you couldn't do half of what so they rude. do because you have all these abstractions that make things nice and human readable. Until you yeah. have to debug them. Yeah. And just like a chef. A chef well, can make yeah. an incredible <laughs> meal out of whatever they need in the fridge, right? Yeah. A good chef is not their tools. A good right. chef will make a good meal regardless. And so there's just so many people, though, that they're so tied to their tools. And that's their identity. Yeah, and so they can't yeah. imagine a life outside of having this whiz-bang gadget that does X, Y, Z or whatever. Yeah. And I think um, because we come from a world where we had to find those tools and so it was difficult. And we didn't have them really. They didn't exist. Yeah, yeah um, for sure. Difficult didn't different. mean impossible though. And that's no. what a lot of people tend to look at is they're like, it's in, it, it, it's definitely not possible to even complete a good web app in 2004. And you're like, why, oh, no. why is this was. in yeah? Why Huge isn't this businesses. in Rust? Why isn't everything in Rust now? Yeah, or exactly. Zig right. Or whatever the latest thing is is like actually you can go write uh, performant great applications well, in Java. And, yeah, Laravel is kicking ass. Yeah, right? and those people are just rolling around in nice cars and just not bragging about it. And they're Lambo. not shitting on Win their Lambo. friends. Yeah. Well, Rails and Rails and Laravel is how you get a Lambo apparently. So I really should oh. rethink my life. <laughs> we should. Reevaluate our life choices. Yeah, exactly. You could have any car that you want. What would you have right now? Any car that I want, a Ferrari. Okay, Ooh, yeah. nice. Is there a yeah. specific one or? No, I don't know what are the latest one. The latest one. Yeah. 
Whatever the latest one is, because it's yeah. good. Just not like La Ferrari. Their hybrid yeah. one is kind of. I'm into ooh, nice. cars and gears. And, oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. Manual or automatic? There's yeah, a spicy manual. question. Man- manual. Okay, I will say this as uh, one ooh, time in so Italy. You have a, a couple spicy years. contradiction. To well, it. yeah. I thought you'd be manual all day. I do like manual and yeah. older cars that I've had. I obviously prefer manual, but technology is good and like give it a shot. So uh, a few years ago, when I was in Italy, I've been a bunch of times, but and rented a 488 Spider, mm. and it's a paddle shifter, and it's a real-ass race car, and it sounds amazing. Yeah. I, just, I was kind of like, Ferrari's cool, but like, what's the threshold there that makes this worth $350,000 until I drove it? And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. And being able to do this on the fly or let, you know, the computer on board be smart. Are the paddles you... an auto shift kind of deal? Or yeah, they... yeah. So the paddle shifters are how like F1 racers, Indy racers mm. and all of that. That's how they, sh- they don't do oh, this Oh, I thought anymore. they had a short shifter, but now no, it's not even anymore. shorter. Now yeah, it's paddles. It's all oh, in there. And it has been that way for a while. I learned. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that technology was race driven originally and then came to consumer cars. And obviously like a paddle shifter on a Honda Nothing wrong with that. It gets you from A to B, but it's just not going to be the same as being in a like nice elite mobile. It's kind of like when you get, you know, a nice leather jacket or just something that has quality to it. You might be like, I don't need that because, you know, my my vans are good enough or whatever it is. It's pointing at my feet, everybody. Yeah, I know. I don't have a problem with vans per se either. But today I'm I wore saying that, like, by the way. but then I when you, suit. yay, yeah. oh, nice. toes, toes. I didn't. I'm, a, I'm Adidas, Adidas all the time. So oh, I was an Adidas person for a very long time, but now I'm like I heard the corn I'm album, and now I'm just done with Adidas. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I'm pretty just much kidding. all Adidas, other than a few pairs of Air Jordans, just because midlife crisis i've had sports cars and motorcycles so now i'm gonna get my old sneakers back i appreciate your honesty yeah yeah, yeah. and i i wore diodoras in like high school and stuff for like soccer but that's just a fun word to say diodora yeah yeah it's the italian brand um anyway when you get something more quality you start to understand and appreciate the differences of what it gives you it's not just like a label whore kind of thing sometimes these things are just that much better yeah yeah, that's, that's why I like old houses too, because they're not all made of like plywood and stuff. Like they have real brick frames and all this stuff, like mid-century modern architecture yeah. and older architecture is quality materials. This is the problem with like it's having unions play. and playing, paying yeah. people a living wage. Now all the cost of construction goes to labor and materials have to be reduced. Otherwise, like every built, every house costs $10 million. This is honestly a way I've been thinking recently about building applications is how will it age yeah. yeah. So I used to think about a lot of things through trade-offs or um, every dependency that I would grab would eventually come back. The tax man would show up, right? And be like, oh, you took a shortcut. Well, now it's time to pay me back, sucker. Yeah. And I'm like, dang <laughs> so it. Good. That's a good one. Right? Because I'd go NPM update. Yeah, give me the latest version. It's like, I broke all your shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it. There's the tax man coming back to right, get me. Yeah. And so now I'm looking at things. I'm like, how does this age? And so I'm looking at things like the dialogue element. I'm like, that's just going to age forever. Yeah. That's like a brick in my application. Oh, I love like, the dialogue element. That's why element. standards always. Yeah. Like, first yeah. and foremost. Oh, my gosh. Like, that's, yeah. 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 Like the masonry layout that's yeah. coming into CSS. Yeah. Oh. That's a really cool one. I don't know. We've seen that a bunch. But the fact that like the, our native tooling can do that instead of hacky work around. I can't wait to now. animate the masonry I don't need layout JavaScript just... for my layout is bullshit, right? Like right. JavaScript is for other reasons. Yeah, yeah. JavaScript to manipulate a layout is like, fuck that. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. You're cool. This yeah, was fun. Yeah, thanks. You too. All right, awesome. I'm not cool. She didn't say that. Yeah, no. you, you uh, too. You both are cool. Y'all. <laughs> y'all. Uh, yeah, I am from Kentucky, so I do say y'all sometimes every oh. once in a while. But that's Who's a, Ken, and why is he tucking? Because watch out what's coming overhead. You know, we're on the Mason-Dixon line, y'all. You never know what, what cannonballs are firing back and forth, that kind of thing. Although I guess the Revolutionary War was not cannonballs. We were muskets. They were like tiny cannonballs at that mm. point. I Is a musket like when you want to smell bad? Is a musket? kit? Dude, I'm Probably just, if I'm, you kill a musket, yeah, yeah, we're going to wrap this up. At least recording-wise, we can hang or whatever. All right, so before we wrap up, is there anything you want to plug, talk about, mention, tell people to visit or not? No, I just, yeah, visit my site and I don't know. Learn something. Do you have an RSS something. feed? No, I okay, don't. No worries. Also, I was like, I'll sub, but it's okay. No, I don't. Um, yeah. No, I'm not going to plug anything. All right. Well, thanks for joining yeah. us. We appreciate it. Uh, well, if you liked it, 
subscribe, leave a review, all the other things. If you like this show, punch your friend in the face. Yeah, do that. Find Robbie the Wagner and spam his Twitter feed. It's Twitter. I'm never calling it the other thing. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Yep.